So what I'm trying to do for this video is capture the experience of walking through New York City with a friend while talking about interesting ideas that we bump into. I might know that there's a lot of things to do in the city, but frankly, chatting with a good friend with nowhere to go is one of my favorite New York experiences. If you gain any new insights while watching this video, please consider subscribing and liking as we take a walk through the city every other week. Today, we're walking through the outskirts of Central Park. Anyways, right now, 70% of the videos we watch on YouTube is driven by Google Brain. 33% of what we purchase on Amazon is influenced by Amazon's A9. And 80% of what we watch on Netflix is influenced by Netflix's proprietary algorithm. Um, I want to talk about artificial intelligence because the further we go into the future, the more influence AIs will have on our lives. Um, as we're capable of cultivating more and more data, uh, we begin to turn to machines to analyze this massive amount of data. Today, we use artificial intelligence such as machine learning to go through a large sum of data to execute tasks. So whenever we look for something and use a search function in a major platform, there are thousands and sometimes even millions of possible search results. With AI systems, we have these black box algorithms that efficiently selects what is shown to us. Um, I used to think that AI just refer to things like Siri or Google Assistant, but it actually encompasses all machine learning algorithms. Kartik Hosnagar, a professor at UPenn and the author of A Human's Guide to Machine Intelligence, claimed that there are two types of recommendation algorithms, and many platforms use a combination of these two to provide user recommendation. A one, which is based on social curation, so like Amazon's people who bought this also bought this. And then there's one that analyzes your personal data like the algorithm that they use for Pandora. They know over 100 songs that you like, they know what type of tempo you generally like and the amount of instrumentation that you're used to, and so on. Then they use this data to recommend songs. There are several problems with these algorithms. For the social curation one, there's a popularity bias. Um, these algorithms will mostly show you things that are generally popular. But for our case, popular doesn't necessarily mean good. It just means that it appeals to a large audience. Um, this form of algorithm makes it hard to find quote-unquote hidden gems online. Um, the issue with the second form of algorithm is that it puts you in a hole where everything it suggests is based on your history and behavior. Um, finding new content or products that are outside of what you're used to is much harder with this form of algorithm. These algorithms keep us involuntarily in the famous echo chambers that we constantly hear about. But these dots are nothing new. And what I find worrisome is how they come up with these algorithms and the possibility of keeping us in an IRL loop. Um, like humans, these deep learning algorithms are based on nature and nurture. Nature is our genetics, and this is equivalent to an AI's original code designed by the programmers. The nurture is our environment, and for AIs, this is the data that they're trained on. Um, the first concern is with nature. Um, everybody, including programmers, have their own perspectives and values, so inevitably, these biases drip down to these algorithms. Um, the second concern is with nurture, or the data that's given to the AI. Um, these algorithms are trained based on data that we give them, and depending on that data, this could create biases within the system. In the United States courts, for example, they're using algorithms to determine defendants' risks. So things like somebody's likelihood to re-offend. But by feeding these AIs past statistics, uh, we have algorithms that are twice as likely to falsely predict future criminality in black defendants than in white defendants. And uh, we have to keep in mind that the past does not guarantee future results. We also have situations where algorithms of big companies such as Amazon rejecting women's resume even though they would accept a man's resume with the same qualification. Um, this recruitment algorithm was actually scrapped in 2015 after Amazon realized that there was an error in the recruitment algorithm because most of the data that was fed to these algorithms was from male employees. Um, this in turn trained algorithms to favor men over women. Um, again, the concern here is that whenever we feed past data to AIs, these algorithms will strictly focus on the past. These algorithms don't really understand context and that the past isn't the sole predictor of the future. Um, there's also companies like Epagogix, which allows movie studios to have AIs predict how much a movie script will make in the box office. And it could predict whether a movie will make $30 million or $300 million. Um, Epagogix artificial intelligence will sometimes even make suggestions on what to change in the script to maximize revenue. 
Epigogix obviously mitigates risk and maximizes profits for these studios, but in return, moviegoers will probably get a less innovative film experience because these AIs will favor scripts that have done well in the past. In a way, if we solely rely on these algorithms, we get stuck in a sort of loop. Um, the algorithms will derive conclusions strictly from the past, then this will affect the present, which will in turn affect the future through the algorithm's influence. Now because these algorithms are black box algorithms, meaning that we don't really know exactly what the algorithm is doing, we're in this weird space where we're kind of letting go of the controller and letting AI nudge us to paths that we might not continue marching towards. When we search for something on Google and we only navigate the first page of what... Oh my goodness, did you guys just hear that? Did I just Google just... Okay, open cash First Avenue at 116. Oh my goodness, did you guys just hear that? That's Google right there. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Alright, that is Google listening. <laughs> so whenever we search for something on Google and we only navigate the first page on what Google decides to show us, we're seeing the world Sorry, in a very limited scope. Shut her off. It's kind of creepy, dude. Thanks. <laughs> and this way of displaying information to us um, appears in many different forms. So the way we read is being affected because of Kindle's algorithm. The houses that we buy is being affected by Zillow's algorithm. The music that we explore is being affected by Spotify's algorithm. Our perception of culture because of YouTube and Netflix. The foods that we try because of Yelp's algorithm. The way we write because of Grammarly's algorithm, right? You get the point. Um, because many of these algorithms are based on social curation and our past history, we get this weird sort of hall of mirrors. Um, I think artificial intelligence is already making a dent in our world. Um, as time passes, more and more companies will implement machine learning algorithms. And the matter of fact is that these algorithms do have a real impact on profits, meaning that we will probably be seeing more of these algorithms in the future. Um, Accenture actually predicts that AIs will lead to an economic increase of $14 trillion by 2035. Um, when I was thinking about how to relay this information, I was a little bit worried that I might be painting AIs as a completely bad thing. It's not. Um, just like electricity or cash, algorithm can be used for good or bad. On um, the point that I'm trying to make in this video, and maybe I'm projecting, is that AIs have a bigger influence in our lives than we think. And all I'm saying is that we should be a little bit wary, we should be a little bit aware of what what's being pushed to us, what is influencing our decisions. But we know that AIs are influenced by original code and the data that they're trained on, but we're still very limited in knowing what these AIs are actually doing with the data to reach their conclusion. Mohsen Nagar, the UPenn professor that I mentioned earlier, he proposed a very interesting thought experiment. If one day you go to a checkup, perfectly healthy, and the doctor tells you that you have a rare disease and without many details, he tells you to start taking a pill, even though that there's no symptoms for the disease, would you take it? Um, Hassan Nagar is drawing similarities of how we're taking suggestions from these AIs without truly understanding how they arrive to these conclusions. And quite honestly, this thought experiment isn't very far off. Um, we're coming to an age where two people with the same symptoms will get different medication because AIs analyze the patient's DNAs. Right, so, and we don't really understand fully what different DNA parts correlates to the body. So in this case, we'll just be trusting the AIs. Um, AIs also have a major role in the stock market, and we don't really understand why AIs do certain trades. But again, we trust them. And the stock market has a very big correlation to how the economy is doing. Right? So we're just trusting, we're just trusting these algorithms to not mess everything up. You know what I'm trying to say? But at the same time, if you don't use these AIs to trade, you're at a very big disadvantage. AIs will begin to play a large part in the world with driverless cars in the future too. Um, they will make real-time decisions, and again, we just gotta trust them. Um, what Hasanagar is worried about is that we're entering a stage where there is no human interjection between the process of providing the data and executing an action. You guys see where he's coming from? Yeah. 
Okay, <laughs> um, so if this is where the structure of the video falls off a little bit. I know the first part wasn't very structured either, but <laughs> I'm experimenting with the format of these videos. And somebody in the previous video suggested that I write a script, which is what I did for the first half of the video. And I guess in this part of the video, I'll be more, more loose and less structured. Um, I just want to share more things that I found in the past week that was interesting and it doesn't really add on to any, to anything really. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but there was this AI called Tay on Twitter. Um, Tay was based on an AI from China called Xiao Bing, and Xiao Bing had like 40 million followers or something like that. Um, and the more people spoke to Xiao Bing, the better Xiao Bing got to um, speak with the people. Anyway, so America tries this out and we create our form of Xiao Bing Tay. And within an hour, Tay, Tay starts seeing racist stuff. <laughs> And the cause of it was because people from 4chan and 8chan started bombarding the Twitter handle, um, trolling it with racist comments and memes, right? And I guess this is an example of nurturing AI with bad data. Microsoft, the creator of Tay, had to shut down Tay because this was getting a little bit out of control. Um, they, were <laughs> they were denying the Holocaust and just saying really, really racist stuff. <laughs> it's... it's it's pretty interesting. It's pretty crazy how, how the, you know, it just it's just crazy. It just really is crazy. You could they're very much like humans, are they not? Right, nature and nurture stuff. It's kind of creepy in a way. Um, a lot of AIs, AI experts don't think that general AI will come anytime soon. So general AIs are the AIs that you'd imagine in um, in, in like. In like the Terminator or in AI the movie or Ex Machina, like those type of general AIs, experts don't think any of those will be coming in anytime soon. But the fact that they have nature and nurture, like that's kind of odd, isn't it? That's kind of, that's kind of weird. I don't know. There's just something about that thought that kind of kind of rubs me the wrong not rubs me the wrong way, but it's just it's just it's a weird thought. It's a weird thought. Um. Um, like I said earlier, artificial intelligence isn't all good or bad. Um, AIs will probably be very helpful in gathering legit data for the social sciences. I think social sciences get a lot of flack right now because of the way that they gather data. But I think with big data and AIs analyzing this huge amount of data, I think, I think we're going to start learning about human nature a lot more in the coming decades. Um, I think it'll be easier for people to get loans in the future too. I think the more data institutions get about people who are trustworthy in terms of people who pay that reliably, I think the threshold of what you have to be in order to get a loan will lower. Um, and like the songs that I'm recommended by Spotify's Discover Weekly isn't too bad either. Um, I'm not saying that all songs that they suggest are good, but every once in a while, the algorithm recommends me some really good songs. Um, YouTube algorithm isn't terrible either. Um, it, it recommends me decent content. I mean, it's just, it's just a little bit claustrophobic is all. These algorithms don't really understand that just because I'm spending more time on a video doesn't mean that that's what I want to watch. I think I actually prefer short content, like 3 minute content or something like that, but YouTube's AI is built to keep us on the platform for as long as possible. Um, this is another way that the algorithm is nudging us to a certain direction. Um, because the algorithm favors long content um, as a creator, I'm practically forced to create long format content. But I guess the bright side is that the creators get pushed to do things that they're uncomfortable with, I guess. I definitely wouldn't have executed um, this type of content if not for, for YouTube algorithms push. I'm also going to talk about uh, how much power developers have right now. Developers for big platforms, they have a lot of power, um, both today and in the future. Any changes or biases that they feed to the system they will influence a large population eventually. I was speaking to a friend and we were playing with this tinfoil hat idea. 
on how ideologies create biases and influence developers. And then these developers create the original code for these AIs. And then these AIs will have an influence in the world, which will affect the world's ideologies. And then these ideologies affect the developers, and then the developers create the code, you know. And then this loop forms again. I have no idea. It's just, it's just an idea that we we're just playing around with. Um, I don't want this channel to be too serious. Um, take, take the ideas, like how do you take ideas from your friends. Trust some of it and be skeptical about it. It is kind of weird how there's a motif of getting stuck in a loop, right? Right? That, that's weird. That's pretty weird. Um, it could be nothing. I, I have no idea. I have no technical... I guess I have some technical background, but... <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that's the end of the video. Um, my dream is to learn and make art for a living so this is why i'm making these videos and if you guys would like to take more walks with me hit subscribe give me a like um, i'd really appreciate it it really helps with the algorithm and it helps other people find this video and my channel so if you guys could do that i'd really appreciate it um yeah my post every monday at 11 a.m most of the time <laughs> Um, I decided to go back to school. Um, I'm going to school um, next month, and I guess I will have less time making these videos. But I'll try my best to be constantly be putting out uh, a walk every every two weeks. Um, yeah. I put like 90 hours of work on my on my first video and then I put like 150 hours on my second video and the first video did it alright. I mean, it was about social media addiction if you want to check that out and my second video was about martial arts and what's the best martial arts and that one bombed. <laughs> and that, I'm not gonna lie, that, that hurt a little bit because like, I just had so much time and I like, come back home for the summer and I didn't get to see my friends at all. After graduating, and and it was rough. It was very discouraging. So this is why I'm I'm changing it up. Um, what this is the reason why I'm making this um, type of content instead of the previous content is because sometimes you just spend a lot of time and it doesn't come out well. It's just heartbreaking, you know. But I still want to pursue my dreams of making art and learning and being able to feed myself I guess um, but yeah I'm going back to school and I'm going to see how my schedule goes and hopefully I could keep making this content which which I will which I will uh -huh. but yeah that's what's going on with my life uh, if you guys have any topic that you guys want to talk about that you know that you want the videos to be about go in the comment section let me know I'm also made social media accounts um, I know I trashed social media in my first video and quite honestly social media is still garbage you know but I spoke to some youtubers and they told me that it's necessary to to have social media so it is what it is right so if you guys want to follow me there and you guys are still using social media and you guys want to keep up with me follow me on social media I guess um, I don't post very often but, oh man, I should start posting to more often, right? I hate posting, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, just let me know what you guys want to watch. And if you guys have any suggestions, I'll take that right up. And, yeah. I appreciate you guys for watching. And see you guys in two weeks. Cheers.